Let me do a numerical example now that will show in a little bit more depth, <clears throat> I think, why economists think that price controls are generally not the best way to go and redistribute economic welfare. So I'm going to use the same setup that I've used a couple of times earlier in the class. I'm going to think about a group of potential buyers and sellers, and all the buyers have their willingness to pay, and all the sellers have their seller costs. And they're all willing to either buy one unit or zero units, or sell one unit or zero units. And if you go back to the earlier videos and see this all worked out, you can see that we get an equilibrium price of $42, where Cody, Dwayne, and Apple are the willing buyers, and an equilibrium supplier of Ysidro, Xerxes, and Zeke, who are all able to make a profit at $42, Wanda and Victor, Allison and Brittany, don't participate in the market in equilibrium. <clears throat> Remembering that consumer surplus is willingness to pay minus price, Cody has consumer surplus of 8, Dwayne has consumer surplus of 18, and Apple has consumer surplus of 28. So for all the consumers combined, consumer surplus is 54. Producer surplus is price minus seller cost, so Ysidro has <clears throat> producer surplus of 42 to minus 35, or 7, and Xerxes has 42 minus 25, 17, Zeke has 42 minus 15, 27, add all those up, and total producer surplus is 51. And so total surplus, total gains from trade, are 105. Let's think about bringing in a relatively modest price ceiling of 36. So we're going to force the price down from 42 down to 36. And essentially, we're going to try and make this good affordable to Brittany. So we're going to increase the number of people who can afford the good. Not all the way down to Allison, but just enough to get south of where Brittany's at. So we're going to increase quantity demanded by one. And quantity supplied actually isn't changed. And notice that we're really picking a pretty optimistic example here of this price ceiling. We're having a price ceiling that only expands the affordability, but doesn't cause any suppliers to take their ball and go home. Notice, even so, we do get a shortage. We can work through producer surplus pretty easily. Isidro has $1 of producer surplus. Xerxes has 11, Zeke has 21, we get $33 worth of producer surplus. And really, again, notice that we've sort of engineered this just right. We somehow have the knowledge of, well, we can push the price down to 36 and not accidentally push Ysidro out of the market and cause him to no longer be willing to supply. Consumer surplus gets a little bit trickier. So we only have three units available, and we have four people willing and able to buy at $36. So first, let's think about what people's consumer surplus would be if they're one of the three that gets their hands on the goods. So for each particular buyer, we take their willingness to pay and subtract off $36. So you can see all the numbers laid out here. But notice, with three people competing for, f sorry, with four people competing for three units, each one only has a three-fourths chance of actually getting their hands on the goods because there's this shortage. So if we think about what their average or expected consumer surplus is, if we multiply 34 by three quarters, we get 25 and a half. So that's how much we would expect Apple's consumer surplus to be. Likewise, if we take 24, multiply by 3 quarters, we get 18. So on average, Dwayne will get $18 of consumer surplus, and so on and so forth down the line. So we get Cody at 10.5 and Brittany at 3. Total consumer surplus is then going to be 57. If we sort of go through all this and sum it all up, what's happened here with this price ceiling? We've gone and reduced producer surplus by 
18 bucks. So producer surplus is now 33 instead of the 51 that we had at the old market equilibrium price. Consumer surplus, on the other hand, is only up $3. So we've inflicted $18 worth of burden on the sellers and only generated $3 worth of benefits for the buyers. So total surplus is down by 15. Our deadweight loss is 15. And if we go back and look at the consumers even, even within the group of consumers, Apple is made worse off on average. Dwayne is way made worse off on average. Cody is made worse off on average. So the only beneficiary of this is Brittany. So really, if you sort of think about it, we've imposed $15 worth of costs to deliver $3 worth of benefits. Or, putting it a different way, something like 80%, 12 of the $15 of costs, has gone missing. So 80% of our attempted redistribution has essentially just gone down a rat hole. And if you're someone who does want to engage in a certain level of redistribution, this should be profoundly discouraging. Because if 80% of redistribution is purely wasted, nobody's going to want to be redistributing very much. So if you're interested in redistribution, we're going to need to find a more efficient way to achieve that. And we're going to go ahead and see later that, again, simply taxing people and giving them money is much, much more effective than establishing a price control and redistributing things in that very indirect way.